Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the 2014 USBC Open Championships. This is Media Relations Manager Matt Canazaro alongside Aaron Smith here at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. We are behind lanes 39 and 40 today to take a look at some of the top senior players around. This group is headed up by USBC Hall of Famer Wayne Webb and also includes PBA 50 champion Tom Carter and senior standout Mark London will have the details for you in just a minute. Practice is just wrapping up and competition will be underway momentarily. Thanks for joining us today. All right, so here we are in the first frame again. Some senior standouts here. And from top to bottom, Skip Wolf, USBC Hall of Famer Wayne Webb, Jim Rude, Tom Carter, Craig Splett, and Mark London. And for those of you who are familiar with some USBC Open Championships trivia, Craig Splett, the only bowler in tournament history with three perfect games on the championship lanes 1996, 2005, and 2013 to find his way into the record books here. We'll have more great details and stats for you along the way. Thanks for tuning in. This is the doubles and single squad here at the 2014 USBC Open Championships. Six games of competition. Doubles is first, followed by singles.
just getting the rundown, possibly on some strategy. And we'll talk about that and so much more over the next couple of hours. Nice conversion there by Splat. Here's a look at Wayne Webb, the Hall of Famer. He's the guy in the fancy pants stepping up on lane 40 right now. Started doubles with a strike. For the early double. And Aaron, of course, is the man with the notes and the stats, so he'll have all the details on their team event yesterday afternoon. hit there but yes uh, this group's actually a little bit split up from yesterday but uh, Tom Carter and his crew brought out I believe six total bowlers universe teams uh, it's, it's pro shop back home in Rockford Illinois but uh, as I mentioned we got two of the teams here uh, bowlers universe one was made up of Craig Splett, Tom Carter, Jim Montgomery, Skip Wolf, and Wayne Webb. They went 32-88 last night, led by Webb's 767. He was joined by Splett at 732. Carter, 616, Skip Wolf, 601, and Montgomery, 572. And then at Bowlers Universe 2, their crossing team went to 31-52. Led by Mark London's 748. He was joined by Mike she Shequin. Not sure if I got that one right. Uh, my apologies if I got that wrong. Uh, 679. Dennis Ganio, 624. Daryl Dunnett, 577. And Jim Rude, 524. So that's how they did on the 43 foot team pattern yesterday. Now here we are on the 40 foot doubles and singles pattern. This guy spent some time at the Bowler's Journal uh, talking to Mark a little bit before. We're just going to Talking to Mark a little bit uh, beforehand here. Just really going to spend some time at the Bowlers Journal already. Bowled a few sets over there. And they're just going to try and find the friction, work together, and do what they can to find some success on this doubles and singles pattern. Shot by Jim there. Finds a double after the early open. Appreciate everybody stopping by on this Thursday afternoon. Hopefully a nice way to end the workday on the East Coast. Some talented, experienced bowlers here. Classic styles and many, many accomplishments at various levels of the game, of course. The most notable of this group, USBC Hall of Famer Wayne Webb.
as Wayne's accomplishments go a long way. Now, you mentioned USBC is also a PBA Hall of Famer, won 20 titles during his time out there on the tour. Now a PBA 50 player, owns five titles out there, including the 2010 USBC Senior Masters, along with the 08 and 09 Senior US Open. He's one of only three players in PBA history to win a, or to be named Player of the Year for both the PBA and PBA 50. So it's keeping in some pretty nice company. Mentioned uh, Craig Splett's 300 run here at the OC. 96 doubles, 2005 singles, 2013 team, so he has every event covered. 28 bowlers in the 111 year history of the Open Championships have rolled more than one 300 on the championships lanes. He's only one with three, though. So looking to make it four for everyone on Bowl TV today. Tom Carter and Skip Wolf nearly won doubles here at the Open Championships back in 08 in Albuquerque. Highlighted by Wolf's 792 set, they finished with 1462 to just miss the top spot set by John Sosha. And Dennis Rakoskis went up one with 1467. Jim Rude, a nice tournament history, uh, making his 34th appearance. 194 average over the course of his career out here. And of course, Mark London with the bowling news. Mark was the 0506 Sport Bowling National Average Leader, putting up a 225 flip a few years back, and also had a fourth place all events back here at the National Bowling Stadium in 2007, highlighted by a 790 set in team. So as you mentioned, a very, uh, very experienced group here that know their way around the lanes and hopefully that translates to a lot of strikes here for everyone tuned in. Well, it certainly was fun to watch London and their team run in 2010. They, uh, they came up just short, uh, had a bit of a rough finish, but, uh, but could have and possibly should have uh, made a, a serious legitimate run at taking home the team title that year, but uh, something they still talk about. Of, of course, this whole tournament is built on 111 years of lifetime performances and, of course, a lot of should have been and could have been. And when you only get one shot at it every year, you got to certainly take advantage of every opportunity. And sometimes you fall short. And in many cases, that simply is used as motivation in returning the following year. And for some preparation begins the minute they get done and pick up their score sheets here in the current year. And they're immediately thinking about next year's event and what can go differently or better. And I feel that like this group is no different. And again, they take full advantage of the opportunities available at the tournament site, including the Storm Bowler Journal Championships and team practice sessions and such. And just want to be as prepared as they can coming out on the lanes. You can't always depend on your experience and success. So even at the classic advanced stage of their careers, they still put in the work. Sometimes you need a break, Tom Carter, as he goes Brooklyn. Got to take him when you can get him out here. For the three bagger, absolutely. It looks the same on the scoreboard no matter how it happens. Just knock him down. A 
There's the double for London. Well, so far, it looks like we're seeing a lot of shiny stuff going down the lane. It sure looked like they were using a little bit more surface in the first few minutes of practice. They're playing a little bit further, further right, and then and made the move to get lined up. Well, and generally with some of our more classic players, the style is uh, just a little bit simpler than today's young guns. And in the olden days, straighter was greater. So these guys have kind of developed that style and adapted it as the game and equipment has progressed, of course. Very versatile, that's uh, certainly something that comes of great importance, especially out there on the PBA 50 tour and for Webb on the national tour for many years. But, uh, what we're seeing today is uh, just uh, straighter's greater, certainly. And most of the guys playing a little bit further to the right and they're gonna, they're gonna move left as the day progresses. Craig Splett looks like he was a little bit further left than maybe Tom Carter or Mark London. So we'll see. Yeah, we've certainly seen this doubles and singles pattern attacked uh, a few ways throughout our live stream broadcast. So, you know, Mark's a usual viewer, so we lost one in the chat room today. I'm sure they've talked about what they've seen on a few of the broadcasts as well as taking advantage of what they could learn in the Storm Bowlers here. It's a strike for Webb after the reset. Five out of six to start. Aaron, so much happening on the World Wide Web right now. We are well into another exciting day on Facebook and Twitter and instant message. So many people tuning in in various ways. And if you'd like to find us at any of those locations, you can check us out on Facebook at The Sport of Bowling USBC, Matt Canizaro USBC, and then on Twitter at USBC, at USBC Matt, and at USBC Aaron. And we'd be glad to answer any questions at any point if you're in the chat room today. And if you are, thank you for joining us. I see Greg Zika, two-time champion here at the USBC Open Championships, as well as the Waz, David Wazwo, host of The Bowler Show every Sunday afternoon. Don't forget to check that out. Yours truly on there every week with Canizaro's Corner. That's where we talk about what's been happening at the USBC Open Championships. And Wayne Webb and crew trying to give us something to talk about on Sunday's show. A lot of strikes here early in doubles. Game number one nearing its end. And here's Tom Carter stepping up looking for four in a row and six out of seven. Great shot there. Takes advantage of the Brooklyn back on 39. And Wayne Webb, of course, with six out of seven as well. If they were pulling together in doubles. Holy cow. Yes, sir, they'd be, they'd be making a an early run at Clark and Carl Polzer, who topped the standings at 1465. The father and son duo from Minnesota actually talked to Clark earlier this morning. He was checking the bowl.com leaderboards and Saw that the update hasn't taken place yet for today and was just making sure they still are in the lead. And as of that conversation, they were 1465, a big number. 25 pence higher than last year's winning score. Of course, last year, our first time going to fresh oil 
for every single squad and two different lane conditions. And again, this year, fresh oil across the board, start to finish, and two different conditions. 43 feet for team event, 40 feet for doubles and singles. And Tom Carter making this 40 foot pattern look very easy so far in game number one as he strikes again. But 1465, the number these gentlemen are chasing. So we will see how things unfold as the day progresses. Craig Splett, Wayne Webb's partner, clean now through seven frames. Looks like Aaron's doing some homework, trying to see what exactly we're seeing on the lanes today. Wayne Webb throwing some deviate equipment. Always part of our task here is to see what these guys are throwing. Looks like Mark London is throwing the red ball, the motive primal rage. That's primal carry there. Showing off for the cameras a little bit there, but uh, the squasher. <laughs> he forgot to flex after that one, though. But he has... Uh, but, uh, Mark uh, recently signed with Motive, so... The red ball very recognizable up there. Webin Carter with... Runs with crew. I think uh, looks like Tom's tossing the Forterra Exile. Skip's throwing. Skip Wolf is throwing a zero gravity. I think Splat changed to a Roto Grip Disturbed. I'm not quite sure what Jim is tossing. These guys certainly putting on a show here early in doubles. Again, a lot of strikes on the board. Just need to get everybody on the same page now. Q 
can't quite tell what deviate rock Wayne has in his hand. It might be a Hellraiser or a few, and they kind of look the same on the page. Whatever it is, it's working though, so. I guess you could call it whatever. As long as it's striking. As soon as I say that, that happens. Tough break for Wayne. Wayne and Tom Carter having a, a rough go at it in the ninth frame here. Once Spot. again, 1465, the number these gentlemen are chasing. Yeah, both of them are working on seven out of eight. Take their count and get ready for the 10th. First double for split. And even our old co-worker, Bob Shoneman, checking in in today's chat room. You know, Bob and the guys are headed this way very soon to take the lanes here at the Open Championship. So why not tune in to one last broadcast and take some notes? Who better to learn from than USBC Hall of Famer Wayne Webb and, of course, the rest of his talented senior crew here. We got a lot of folks stop by throughout the days and tell us that they, they tuned in to one or two or all of the broadcasts and felt like they they learned a few things watching ball motion and getting some tips and it helped their performances. So always always nice to see this opportunity pay off and, and help folks out there uh, for whatever the reason and many others just tune in because they love bowling and would watch bowling on TV or online anytime possible. So we do appreciate everybody tuning in, whether it is once or all 30 or so broadcasts. Just a quick reminder for everyone, uh, we'll be back on the air in two days. Get back to a team event out here. Had a few doubles and singles or passed a few times out here on Bowl TV from the Open Championships. Presented by Trey. But on the 31st, 7 p.m. out here, 10 p.m. Eastern, Ben Laughlin and Miguel Lopez on companion teams last year both shot 300 during their team event. Laughlin went on to have some success at the is it the RPI or RPC? The, the RPI Finals. RPI part of Finals. The World Series of Pulling Five in Las Vegas. Went on to uh, capture that title. You know, Miguel was at uh, Wichita State alum as well, so. Saw one of his past teammates earlier today, Brent Bowers, checking out the NBS. like that. We already got some scores in. Tom Carter, 223. Skip Wolf, 193. 
that strike wings into the 240s. Splett was unable to convert the 3 4 6 7 to finish at 189. Mark London still has 240s out there. Gets that one wide. Shot by Jim to kick off his 10th. Uh, definitely not the way some of these guys would like to finish up game one. Had a few splits in the 9th and 10th. So they certainly got off to a great start here in doubles. And faults them just a little bit here towards the end. Of course, it's a 10 frame game. Got to stick with it and stay firm. And I actually saw that a little bit yesterday in practice. I know, I know, hard to believe I was out there practicing, but it's, uh, it's very simple to get comfortable, especially when you're throwing good shots and throwing strikes, and then all of a sudden, you, uh, you get a little bit lazy even. I saw that happening after three or four in a row, which also surprised me for me to have three or four in a row. Uh, but then I always wondered, you know, like why, why not stay as aggressive and as focused? Uh, I don't know. But uh, certainly something for me to work on personally, and, and not sure, of course, what's what's happening here. Whether it's just a, a lack of focus, or you know, just bad shots, or you know, as of course as the day progresses, the lanes will transition. And part of the challenge of bowling in general and at the Open Championships is staying ahead of those moves and trying to predict what's going to happen. What's the right move to help us continue to find success as our Invisible defense, the Kegel Ice Oil moves around on the lane. If it was that easy to figure out, the scores would be quite a bit higher. With the challenge of sport bowling in this 40 foot lane condition, it changes with every shot. And it's the guys who, or ladies, who figure it out, work as a team, communicate. Those are the folks whose names will be hanging above the lanes when we hit the El Paso Convention Center in 2015. Yeah, we talked to a few folks this year. Uh, our last gentleman to shoot 300. Because he nearly shot twice, Merlin. Merlin Ung. Ung, there we Concord, go. Concord, California. Yeah, Merlin uh, kicked off his team event. With, uh, with 12 in a row and actually started off the next game with the first two. So started off with the front 14. And uh, he admitted that he you know, saw his teammates starting to make the move. And after that, that kind of start, he felt he could, could make his shot work and was a little bit stubborn and was unable to uh, keep that success going playing that line. Finished with the 162, made a ball change and kind of got in where the rest of his teammates were at. And Starks, the Starks strike started piling up again. Finished with a 299. For a nice 761. Okay, we meet a lot of stubborn folks who get comfortable. Or even, even worse, those who are used to their home centers and playing the lanes a certain way, and then coming out to the Open Championships expecting that way to work, 
and then being very surprised and upset when it does not. But of course, the conditions here much different than at your home house. The environment much different, the approaches even. Need some getting used to, especially if you bowl in one center back home. But that's the, just the challenge of tournament bowling. You're in an unfamiliar environment and you have to adapt and then keep up with the changes as the day progresses. All right, a ball change for Mark London goes to the to the purple ball. He saw Anthony Lacaz use it right here on Bowl TV to take over all events. Give him a shot here. Aaron, it's happened again. We are global one more time. Our friends in Scotland tuning in. Welcome back to Bowl TV. Everybody else as well. This is Matt Candazaro and Aaron Smith. We are live behind lanes 39 and 40 here at the National Bowling Stadium. And the year is winding down. We are hours away from June already. It's hard to believe. Kick this event off on February 28th. And we'll be here until July 13th. We will welcome the USBC Queens and Senior Queens the last week of June. TV show to be live on July 3rd. And then we'll have the Senior Championships come in as well. But many, many more great teams headed this way. But it sure does go quickly. I'm sure those folks on the top of the leaderboard I'm going to say, can't go quick enough. The weight, part of the experience here at the Open Championships. Obviously, if Clark is calling, he's uh, he's been checking, keeping uh, keeping tabs on the double scores, seeing if that 1465 will. enough I, I can't imagine we talk a lot about the the history of this event this of course the 111th edition of the USBC Open Championships it all started back in 1901 in a warehouse building in Chicago six lanes 41 teams got it done that event lasted just four days and now we've evolved into a 136 day event with more than 55,000 bowlers headed our way. But there was a day not too long ago, Mr. Smith, where there were no online leaderboards. There were no brackets. People just came out, they bowled for the Eagles. And then they went home and waited. But how in the world did they keep tabs on what was happening? I don't know. I don't know either. There was no bull.com, no videos on Twitter and Facebook. I can't imagine how agonizing that wait must be with, without knowing. Yes, it certainly has evolved. Saw uh, recently inducted USBC Hall of Famer Dale Traver. Traver and his around. boys. Yeah, they uh, they walked by when we were getting set up. Gus Norris, Gary Derashevsky as well. Lenny Boris Jr. They're not bad. They're not bad. They're okay. Could be. Uh, well, could be an entire team of Hall of Famers in the near future. And they've been together for many years, Lens Limited. And they proved they've still got some of that magic back in 2009, taking home the regular team and team all events titles. Certainly to pad their resumes and for a couple so far, solidify their spots in the Hall of Fame. But there are a few teams with those credentials at the Open Championships. Another one that was exciting to watch recently, Bill Spagner. Don Scudder, Steve Fair joining that team in recent years. Of course, Pollard's Bowl, the 1996 Team All Events winner with a record score that still stands today. 
couple close calls over the years, but that is our longest standing record to date. And uh, those guys, I bet the announcements on that squad took a little bit of forever, just uh, with all the things they've accomplished. Nice to see those guys still at it after all these years. They made a run. They made a top five appearance in the team event not too long ago. And for many of these bowlers, like the ones you're watching right now, kind of a, an energizing reemergence almost once they hit that 50-year-old mark and start getting ready for the PBA 50 tour and some of the great senior events coming up in the next couple of weeks, the Senior US Open and the USBC Senior Masters. And we've seen a lot of players coming through this way, headed towards Las Vegas for those events. And read something yesterday about former Major League Baseball player John Burkett, who's been active over the last decade or so, has bowled the USBC Masters a couple times, but he is ready to train and make a legitimate run at the PBA 50 Tour, if not the regular PBA Tour a little bit too. Well, John did just to finish up at the, uh, at the summer swing over in Oklahoma. Got some press on that. So the PBA 50 Tour is not dead by any means. These guys are out there supporting it. All the big names from the PBA National Tour now turning 50 in Little Monticelli, Parker Bone III, Norm Duke, Pete Weber. So certainly we should see a serious growth of the senior tour and senior events. And what better way to prepare, sharpen your skills than a weekend at the USBC Open Championships right here in Reno. Just a short drive to Las Vegas. Yes, only, only a seven hour trip on two lane highway. Now that's an experience if you've never had the opportunity. Stopping in Tonopah, staying at the Clown Motel. Ha. Get pulled over in Hawthorne for speeding, all that fun stuff. Keeping it going. Side of that pocket 710 in the ninth frame. It's nearly been perfect out here. Only three frames without a strike so far for the Hall of Famer. Like a ball change for Tom Carter as well. Again, off to that strong start with seven out of the first eight strikes in game one. And two splits to end that game. Started with a split in the first. Looks like he went to a DV8 Diva. And 39 strikes again for Webb. Another pocket 7 10.
big set in singles yesterday, 767. Two tough breaks on the left lane. Another good break for London as the four pin goes. Yeah. Gotta get some breaks, you gotta mix them in there. Oh, absolutely. We saw Matthew O'Grady and his talented group come through in the last couple days and they left a whole lot of stone eights and nines and tens and I told them it's cause they were throwing it too well. Sometimes you gotta throw one out there and get a break in the, in the middle of a string or two and Shake him up, loosen the arm swing a little bit. We saw Tom Carter do that in game number one when Brooklyn in the middle of a four or five bagger. And granted it all evens out. Side pulling, Mike Flanagan stopping by to say hello today. Mike, of course, a live streamer himself and now working at Storm Products in Utah. Big sponsor here at the Open Championships, the Storm Bowlers Journal Championships and your official case box provider for Boing Ball Express. This broadcast, of course, as with all Open Championships broadcasts on Bowl TV this year, brought to you by Track Bowling. Track also the title sponsor of the Showcase Lanes. So if you'd like to book a team practice session, get down there for one hour with up to nine of your teammates. 125 bucks on the Track Showcase Lanes will get you ready for your team event here at the 2014 USBC Open Championships. It helped Aaron and his teammates immensely. As Aaron put up a huge team set this year on the championship lanes. Yes, if you want to figure out the way to shoot 614 in team <laughs> event. I'm the guy to talk to. <laughs> a 
Well, it certainly was a huge improvement from a year ago. It was. Uh, so you did something right. I bowled all three games this year. Ah, uh, see what I did there. I'm smart like that. All right, another ball change for Carter. Able to mix him up. And if you're curious about the lane conditions that these gentlemen are battling today, you can check out bowl.com, go to the Open Championships page, click on the Information tab, and you'll see a link for the lane conditions. All kinds of different graphs and views of this year's two patterns, 43 feet for the team event, 40 feet for doubles and singles, both sports certified. So a premium on shot making and spare shooting. Gotta be accurate, make good shots. It's the national championships, so you have to earn it here at the National Bowling Stadium. Scoring pace has slowed down a little bit here after the strong start and doubles for these guys. I know last year we saw a few groups really come firing out of the gates on the 39 foot pattern featured at the 2013 event, only to run into what you described as the third game blues. As the Kegel ice began to transition. Well, that certainly was something people didn't expect to come into the 2013 event. was a brand new kind of oil, something that nobody in the world was familiar with. It was unveiled, debuted here at the Open Championships, and designed to hold up much longer and delay that transition. And with the two different lane conditions, we, of course, have much more flexibility in designing the lane conditions. And then, of course, you throw in the ice oil along with the fresh oil, and it's a whole new ball game. Something to talk about and learn from, certainly. But if you come out, if you bowled so many years and expect the lanes to transition a certain way in a certain amount of time, last year you were very surprised to see that did not happen. So the Kegel Ice Oil doing its job. Wayne Webb and his pants doing their job there, tripping the four. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you over Wayne's pants. Uh. Uh, Wayne, a snappy dresser. 
I mean, Guppy too. Known for their colorful wardrobes. Tom Carter goes sailing past the head pin. They use the one, two, four, the head scratcher. Yeah, Tom's gone through a few different balls here. After the strong start, started with seven out of the eight, or seven out of the first eight. of the spare then. Couple of the day for split. change for Mark London results in 10 back. Right. That does a switch to the motive covert revolt. Are speeding along here, heading into the final phase of game number two of doubles. This is Matt Kenazar and Aaron Smith. We're live at the 2014 USBC Open Championships. Thanks for sharing part of your workday with us here on Bull TV. As Aaron mentioned, we'll be back on the air two days from now for a team event. We're going to watch Ben Laughlin and Miguel Lopez, who both shot 300 in team last year. A talented group with a lot of potential. We'll see what they could do on this year's 43-foot team pattern.
Carter gets back on track there. This is a shot 205 as we get ready for the foundation frame. Maybe switch to one of the balls in the radical line. Not very familiar with them, so let's see if we can figure that out. Three in a row for Webb to set up the 10th. So it's 236 out there after a 245 start in doubles. Wayne finished up yesterday in team event with a 767. So he's looking for a few more strikes to keep, uh, keep a reasonable shot at all events still alive. Anthony Lacaz, uh, Mel Melrose Park, Illinois, on top of the standings, 22.73, and of course the, the number of these guys are chasing in doubles, 14.65, Carl and Clark Polzer out of Arden Hills, Minnesota. Stepping up on 39. Skip Wolf's going to kick off the 10th frame of game two here. So there's a shot at 223 out there. Tom Carter can get to 205. Wayne Webb, 236. Jim Rude, 192. Craig Splett, 191. And Mark London saw his 230s out there, 237.
nice crowd joining us both in person and in the chat room. Thank you for tuning in today to watch this talented group of experienced players at the USBC Open Championships. Finishes up 2.02. Looks like Tom Cutter is going to go to the back here on the fill ball. Try to find that look he had at the beginning. Looks like he went back to try that for Terra Exile. Leaves a 10-pin for 184. Like a ball change for Craig there. Finds a double in the tenth. He had a big day yesterday as well in team 732. He's back after, after a 208 start with 255 and 269. And despite some early carry issues on 39 for Wayne, he's going to be in the 230s. on those seven tens, he'd be looking 270s, 260s right now, instead of 240, 230. But we've said it before, we'll say it again, that's part of winning an eagle out here is not only making great shots, but you gotta gotta catch the brakes as well. Certainly does take often a career day. And you're right, you gotta have those hits along the way. I bet any champion will tell you that. No doubt there is no perfect performance here at the USBC Open Championships. Things just have to go your way on that day. An 
interesting lead from to our left. A seven, eight, nine. Ever popular. Wowzer. You can see that on the left side of your screen on lane 38. We have folks getting their cell phones out for this one. Takes care of it. How about that? Textbook. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's how you do it. Well done, Kim Clark. If you can't make it, don't leave it. That's right. Also, part of the keys to success here at the Open Championships. And again, you can see that pickup. You can rewind it. You see it on the left side of your screen, lane 38. Kim Clark. Not only did she leave the 789, but she picked it up. Ryan London finishes up the 221. Two for Root, so. It's just like that, we're ready for game three. Doubles moving right along here. Kicks off game three with a strike. does not appear we're going to have new doubles leaders on Bowl TV today. Sir, they looked good. Early in game one, there was a lot of strikes being thrown. And even though it could have been even better matching these guys up differently, um, again, scoring pace has slowed down quite a bit, got out of the gates to a great start. And did you have a chance to talk to Mark at all about their strategy coming in? Or is it just kind of general chit chat, just getting ready for today's show? Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, they did uh, did spend some time over at the Storm Bowlers Journal to get a feel for the pattern, as well as try to take home a little extra, a little extra cash as well. But uh, an experienced team like this, obviously, a lot of com communication going on and. They're just going to kind of feel out how the lanes were reacting compared to what they saw over on the high end of the stadium. And then just work off of finding the friction and make the appropriate moves as they figure them out. So we've seen a few guys go through a couple ball changes here. The one guy who stress had who has been striking consistently throughout both games. Wayne Webb has yet to make a ball change, has just made slight adjustments. He's getting his ball to come off the pattern pretty nicely so far.
Double for Carter and Wolf to start off game three. Alright, Mr. Smith, so much happening today on the email and the Facebook and Twitter. And in the chat room, nice crowd on hand and growing. Well, it is Thursday already. It's, it's almost, almost the weekend. For everybody else. That's right, no weekends and holidays here at the Open Championships. The weekends traditionally are the busiest time here on the championship lanes. We're getting back to some nice long days in the next few days. Slow down a little bit for the Memorial Day weekend, but we're back to bowling. 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. starting Friday. Just the way we like it. to the ball he started with and finding similar results. Well, sometimes you have a game plan coming in and start with this ball and move down to this ball and this ball and sometimes you had the answer the whole time. Seems like Wayne Webb has quite a few answers so far in his 2014 Open Championships campaign. Two big games here in doubles, 245, 236. And these guys bowled well in the team event yesterday. Mark London, big set also, 748, I believe Aaron said earlier. That is correct. And Wayne doing his best to chase down Anthony Lacoste, who leads all events category with 2273. Fourth highest score in tournament history. And a, certainly a true test of versatility now that the Open Championships for the past two years has had 
fresh oil for every squad and separate lane patterns for team and doubles and singles. That is a fact. Our all events record holder, Matt McNeil, 23-26. Back in 2010, a record that we almost never thought was gonna fall after being shot the year before. Ron Vokes, 23-21. A monster, monster number, and McNeil shows up one year to the day almost later. Takes that down. Of course, again, just one lane condition prior to 2013. McNeil obviously figured something out in the team event. Much less traffic on the left side during doubles and singles and helped get him to the top of the record book. Of course, the previous record holder, Stephen Hardy, 22.79 on the way to the All Events title in 2002. Back in Billings. Big scores that year. Record number 364. Yeah. A lot of folks still talk about Billings as one of the places they never thought they'd want to go, never thought they'd have a chance to go, and ended up loving it there. And that comes up quite a bit as we talk about next year's event in El Paso, Texas. Some place the Open Championships has never been. It'll be the 112th edition of the event. And we've never been there. First time city. Folks are clamoring for someplace new. And we're giving it to them. So come on out. Registration is open. Plenty of room. If you never thought you'd visit El Paso, Texas, well, here's your opportunity. And on that note, Aaron Smith is going to tell you all about next year's new schedule and some of the great incentives involved with the 2015 Open Championship. All right, thanks, Matt. Uh, we'll have some new changes going to schedule for 2015 in El Paso. No new or no bad squad times coming up in the future. We're eliminating the 7 a.m. Kicking the day off a few hours later. Starting at 9 a.m. with a doubles and singles. Follow that up with a 1 p.m. doubles and singles. 5 p.m. team event, 8.30 team event, and also on select squads. And 8.30 p.m. doubles and singles split squad. So no longer are the days of having to walk into the stadium or convention center at six in the morning or stepping out at two or three in the morning. So certainly if you don't get the time you'd like, it's still not that bad. Speaking of not that bad, Skip Wolf and Tom Carter each kicking off game number three here with the front four. All right, Aaron Smith, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity here. Mark London, for those of you who don't know, has been on our broadcast before, both in front of the camera and behind it. And he is a broadcaster by training. And, of course, a, a bowler by training as well. And uh, he's got his broadcast hat on as much as he's trying not to. He's, uh, he's thinking about the folks out there in, in Bull TV land and uh, has offered this great opportunity. All right, so we got 366 folks watching now. Yes, if uh, if you'd like to jump on the official USBC Open and Women's Championships Facebook page, it's the only place this can happen. Go to the official OCWC Facebook page. I'm gonna set it up here in a minute. You can ask Mark London a question. 
So as we get through the end of doubles here and get ready for singles, feel free to ask Mark anything you want to know about what's happening out there, what these guys are throwing, anything he can answer to help enhance the quality of today's broadcast. He can't be on here telling you what's going on because he's bowling, but he'd be glad to swing by and give you some insight as far as what we're seeing. And maybe we can get him on between doubles and singles just to, uh, to give a few ideas of what they've seen and what their strategy is heading into their final three games. So I'm gonna set that up now and feel free to drop your questions in there and see how this turns out. Remember to like the page so that you don't miss out on any of the great things that happen here on the tournament lanes that may not be quite bowl.com newsworthy but are great little tidbits for the Facebook world. Certainly a unique, unique opportunity. Mark sharing his insights in real time, or nearly real time. Depends on how fast you can type. up the 10 pin. We're back to the Skip Wolf and Tom Carter show. Looking for the doubles 300 here. Both starting with the front five. Makes it the six bagger. We'll call that two ninety six, Matt. Carter and Wolf start with the first 11 strikes of game three. Tom Carter gets that one a little bit right, checks early. Leaves the 3, 6, 9, 10. The first question posted is uh, it's not as probing as we had expected. <laughs> but, uh, but Tyler Wright wants to know, where did Wayne Webb get those pants? Well, we'll get into that and more.
Blood unable to get the messenger over to the 10 like he did last frame. We had a discussion at league last night. Now you want to add your insight, Mr. Canizaro. Is there a difference between a messenger and a scout? No, I don't believe so. I believe it's all a matter of where you come from and what they call things. And uh, as we travel the country doing what we do and the fact that you and I both come from different places, you've said things and I've probably said things that, that didn't make much sense except to us because of where we come from, of course. You know, we talked about you know, eight pins and nine pins, stone eight, cold eight, all kinds of just different ways of saying the same thing. Scout, the messenger, the tomahawk, the bird dog. Certainly all different ways to the same meaning. And of course, a way to spice up the broadcast when we say these words over and over and over. Some more dramatic sounding, of course, a tomahawk sounding much more dramatic and fast paced than a simple messenger. So maybe in the exciting instance of pins flying and bouncing all over the deck, you're going to tomahawk it, but a slow rolling messenger makes it sound so much different. It's more dramatic that way. But in the end, as long as they fall, that is the goal. Looks like we've got a few more questions rolling into the official Open Women's Championships Facebook page. So I'll have to get Mark up here pretty soon. The Waz checking in. As well as Nicole DePaul. Jason Hoodle. They're coming everywhere. So thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to Bowl TV today. And joining us on the official Facebook page as well. And if you if you don't look closely, Skip Wolf's scores have disappeared. Red strikes on the red. Front seven here at the NBS. Great shot by London, and again, he has spent many, many years, almost as many as you've been alive, Aaron, Holy in the broadcast. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little while. Uh, in the broadcasting business and has seen the broadcasting industry change quite a bit over the years and how things are done and recorded and filmed. And uh, he's always intrigued by our setup here, of course, uh, which is a work in progress and has changed quite a bit since being unveiled in 2010. And I think at the same time, maybe talking to us gives Mark a chance to maybe not focus so much on the bowling portion of it. He's gonna put his glasses on. So what happens when you're a senior player, sometimes you need glasses, but again, maybe the, maybe All right, Skip Wolf, eight in a row. And that's going to attempt not to d bring down the whole setup here. As he attempts to work the mic. All right, so we've got okay. Mark London here. All right, let's see what do we got here. I uh, have to ask Wayne about the pants. Yes, 
Ross. <laughs> uh, Dr. Nick, uh, let's see. The primal Rage and the Darkman's uh, Revolt. Shutting down short league strategy. Uh, well, we bowled on the journal that was a lot tighter, so we're still adjusting what we see here. So we're just following Wayne Webb. You know, can't beat that Hall of Fame carry. Fact of life. Folks, I bowled with Handigard this year. I've seen Hall of Fame carry for 36 weeks. I know what it's like. All right, thanks for your questions. Keep coming. we got another couple hours of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Straight from Mark London. Taking some time away from, from the lanes and always thinking about the broadcast and how to make it better. Offering some insight from the lanes. To sum that up, he's going to check with Wayne Webb about those pants. Perhaps uh, those can be available to you. The Wayne Webb Collection. And his answer is yes, they're breaking down quite quickly. How far are they going to get? Hard to know at this point. But uh, for these guys, again, a little bit straighter players. And hope probably the initial goal will be to ball down and stay, I don't want to say farther to the right, but uh, farther right than we've seen. Some of our young players are Tim Max of the Worlds, who can get way left. Brian Burkhart, we saw him nearly lofting the left gutter in singles. Uh, the defending doubles champs, we had them on just a few days ago. And as we talked about, London and the crew took advantage of the Storm Bowlers Journal Championships presented by USBC being held under the same roof over on lane 69 through 78 here at the National Bowling Stadium. That event, of course, features the same doubles and singles pattern that they're battling right now here at the Open Championships. So what better opportunity to prepare than to bowl on the very same lane condition in the same building, same approaches, same high ceilings, you name it. And we did get some, some thoughts from Matt Gasson the other day, the talented youngster and first timer here at the Open Championships. He of course is a former junior Team USA member and bowled on our featured broadcast with Matt O'Grady. And seven out of 10 first timers in that group. And they said they bowled the Bowlers Journal quite a bit. But there's something about the wall that separates the BJ from the rest of the Open Championships that kind of changes the feel. And walking down center aisle for the first time to compete at the Open Championships uh, just brought on the butterflies and the nerves. And you saw that in their first game or so here on the main stage. But those nerves quickly went away as the strikes began to pile up. And I think even with the experience level that we're seeing right now with Wayne Webb and his guys, they're still gonna get those nerves and butterflies, but I think they put together a nice strategy over at the Bowlers Journal Championships. And of course, things are always gonna be a little bit different once the lights come on. And as they say in, in the cliche, you, you have to play it by ear if things aren't exactly what you expected. You have to adapt on the fly. And these guys certainly have enough experience to be able to do that. And here we see Skip Wolf migrating quite a bit left as we are in game three. He is working on eight in a row, looking to make it nine in his final game of doubles here. And he does. A little bit of a, a spin on the ball, but uh, a, a tight inside line there, obviously working for Mr. Wolf. So I just tweeted that out. Tell your friends, get on Facebook, get on Twitter. We got the front nine live on Bull TV. Still waiting for that first one this year. Just like that. Skip is up and ready to go. Skip not wasting any time here. Great shot by Wayne there. Everybody has their own 
pre-shot routine and, and preferences when it comes to bowling. Some like to take their time, take so many deep breaths. Some just like to get up there and do their thing. You did it nine times already, you should have a pretty good idea of what you want to happen. All right, here's the first offering. All 10 back. All right, we saw the aforementioned Matt Gaston had the front nine a couple days ago on Bowl TV. Came up short. The polished Skip Wolf. Unfazed by the cameras. We've had quite a few exciting moments on Bowl TV. As Aaron mentioned, none this year. Not in front of the cameras, at least. Here's Wolf stepping up, front 10. Looking for 11, lane 40, National Bowling Stadium. And the mixer does not get the seven to go. The light mixer, not enough. What a great run, 10 in a row for Skip Wolf. Spare here gives him 289. Pretty good, pretty good pitch there, and threw a few pins over at it. They did not cooperate when it was all said and done. A great finish here and a great momentum boost. Seeing it's ready for singles here. Fantastic 289 from Skip Wolf to finish with 694. Skip finished up yesterday with a 601 in team event. Still his partner Tom Carter bouncing back nice after Going through a few different balls in game two. Decent count, he'll be in the 250s. So a chance at 542 in game three here. It'll get him up to 1354. Wayne able to get the 10 pin out there. Nearly looking at his third 710 of the day. Aaron, what did Wayne have in team yesterday? 767. 767, so right on pace with Anthony Lacaz, who also rolled a 760 series in the team event. Anthony, of course, went on to shoot 760 again in doubles and was in the 740s in singles on the way to 2273. Mr. Webb certainly going to have his work cut out for him in singles. But with the new fresh oil for every squad, it seems that the basic strategy is that the lanes will open up and high scores in singles. That at least was the idea before last year when it only took 7.95 to win the singles event.
rough hit there for Craig Splett, and so we'll get the five pin put back up there. Problem for Craig. Takes care of the five seven. Wish I could say the same for myself yesterday. Ah. The battle. I do feel pretty good about the battle, by the way, just because the worst that can happen is that we can be in a tie for another year. So I'm okay with that. Sure, there will be more opportunities, though. Okay. But for the record, there's no way that you should have lost last night. Just for those of you folks wondering what the heck we're talking about out there, we, uh, we do escape the National Bowling Stadium every once in a while. And we have our Wednesday night employee league. And it's a battle for pride each week. And who will come away with more wins by the end of the season? Aaron went into last night's league session with a 5 4 advantage. And I did not carry one bit games two and three. It gave him every opportunity to show up big in game three. And his run. Came to an end with a 5-7 in the middle of game three. So we're all knotted up. Five apiece. I believe I was down 3 nothing to start or 3-1. to one. But that's our excitement here. Right now, Mark London trying to provide a little bit of excitement at the Open Championships. That's why we're here, really, not to talk about what we do at 9.30 on Wednesday nights. Although it is pretty exciting. And there was some talk of live streaming the final week of the league. Mark London says thank you to the pins for cooperating there. You guys bowl too fast. That's the problem. Well, we did have only five people last night. That did help. It wasn't because we struck a lot, that's for sure, because we certainly did not. Great finish there for London, 229 for 658. Jim Rood, 597. Puts him at 1255. Splutton Webb, 1312. Carter and Wolf. 1354 with a big 542 in the finale. So we'll make sure these guys wait. We've had some people get ahead of themselves. And Skip Wolf gave us the look. She gets ready for singles. It just takes a minute to flip over. And, and it will go. We promise. We promise. There it is. He was already bowling in the wrong lane. But here we are, underway. Doubles. Now a memory. Singles happening. Eight twenty-six, the number they're chasing. Lewis Jenkins Jr. from Oklahoma. Battled back from a disappointing doubles event. Shot 527. And then things just fell into place. He didn't change balls, didn't change lines. It all just came to him. And he shot 826 with a 300 game. And it's been a while. He's been on top of the standings. Again, we were just talking about last year's 
singles event. Zeke Bate, the youngster from Westerville, Ohio, shot 795 and was as surprised as anybody that he was able to hold on to the title. And we certainly expected big, big scores in singles. Uh, just with the team staying on the same pair of lanes, coming in with a, a strategy, six on a pair compared to four in the past. And by staying on that pair of lanes, your team really has the chance to work together to strategically break down the lanes as you would in a team event. Just a little bit less traffic, but the same idea. And I personally certainly expected doubles possibly to be a little bit of a struggle just with the fresh oil and trying to break the lanes down, but then totally expected singles to be big numbers. And uh, certainly was not the case. 795 got it done this year. 826 is the number to beat. Speaking of 800s after 767 in team event and 696 in doubles, Wayne Webb would need 810 for a share of the all events lead with Anthony Lacaz up on top with 22-73. And folks, remember we mentioned it earlier, if you go to the, the official USBC Open and Women's Championships page on Facebook, Mark London, who's getting ready to bowl on lane 40, will answer your questions. It's a unique opportunity to get some insight from from the lanes that doesn't matter myself, so that's always a bonus. But uh, Matt set up a a post on there, so feel free to throw your questions in. And when Mark gets done tripping nine pins like that, he'll take a few minutes and run through them real quick here, live on Bull TV. So be sure to take advantage of uh, this cool opportunity. Mark sends a two bad out to Jeff Riggles and everyone back home in the Midwest. Yes, Mark, it's been a long time in the Illinois area and moved to Texas a year or two ago, chasing other opportunities now. Working in the pro shop business a little bit and writing for Bowling News. And of course, keeping tabs on us. That's true. Also keeping tabs on us today, David Prang. Everybody at, over at headquarters. Take some time off on a coffee break to tune into Bowl TV. It's not 9 a.m. though. Carter mixes him up for the double. Do you see the word old in quotation marks by Mr. Prang? I get what he's doing there. But here at the Open Championships, we use the words experienced and classic. Season? Never the O word. Season is a good one. Although, that might lead to hunger and discussions of food. I could eat. See? You've already done it. You've opened the door. But Mr. Prang also with some roots in Illinois. I believe he's even a Cubs fan. I believe so. I believe I saw even a, a Cubs sticker or a license plate on Kathy Prang's car at some point too. Or maybe that was David's. I didn't know there were so many of you still. For troopers. You guys, along with PBA star Chris Lowshedder. About that. Did not know that. Also, big fan of Chicago sports. Team USA member Stephanie Johnson. You learn something every day, Mr. Smith. That's true. See, I got on the mic and it, and 
Yeah. Mark has answered all of the questions out there. Familiar names checking in the chat room. Mike Austin, I believe, he is Mr. London's employer and is either headed our way or is already here nearby. Looks like we're getting a ball change from Wayne here after the split in the second. Webb with his first strike of singles. It's gonna take a few strikes for him to make his climb up the all event standings. Mike Austin will be here June 8th and 9th. So for those of you who are out there wondering, that also is the same time frame for our old friend Nick Cyphers who tuned in the other day to do some research. And John Gaines in Lodge Lanes 2 will be in town that week. They hit the lanes for the team event June 10th. It's already right around the corner. I can't believe it. June, about to happen. Also bowling on that day, I believe uh, Brian Himmler, who had a fantastic showing at the Bowler's Journal in 2013. He's bowling with Jimmy Johnson, son of Hall of Famer Don Johnson. So we got a solid group and we'll be out here as well. So plenty of uh, plenty of talented teams still left to make their way to Reno. Once again, this is Matt Canizaro and Aaron Smith. We are live at the 2014 USBC Open Championships on Twitter. Hashtag USBC Open. We are behind lanes 39 and 40 here at the National Bowling Stadium. One of nearly 30 broadcasts from the biggest little city in the world this year. If you'd like to find out what's coming up, you can visit bowl.com. Either check out the bottom right-hand corner of the main page or go to the Open Championships page. Click on the Information tab, and you will also see a link to this year's live stream schedule. A lot of great broadcasts coming up, including almost a solid week for Mr. Smith and I over at the Reno Sparks Convention Center, home of the 2014 USBC Women's Championships. Hashtag USBC Women's. That event kicked off April 11th, will run until June 30th as the best women bowlers in the world head our way. We'll be there during leading up to and during Queens Week as the top players hit the lanes at the RSCC before heading over to the National Bowling Stadium to compete in the Queens and Senior Queens. A lot of great coverage that week and beyond, so check out that schedule. We're already working on next year's schedule, believe it or not. So many great teams at this event. Hard to catch everybody.
hard to catch everybody year to year, of course. Uh, so many great teams. Somebody's going to be left out, but we've always got them in mind. And a nice list already started as possibilities for 2015, of course, will be at the El Paso Convention Center in El Paso, Texas. First visit in 112 years of Open Championships competition. If you haven't signed up, do so now on bowl.com. Aaron gave you the rundown earlier, all the great details. And no doubt, he has some personal insight into Sun City and all it has to offer, having lived there in 2010, after leaving me high and dry here in Reno. Is this when I'm supposed to jump in and talk about that? Sure. Oh, how about that? But yes, uh, El Paso, a very, very excited host city. To host the women's championships in 2010. They had been looking forward to that since they had won the bid, I believe in 2006. So they certainly rolled out the red carpet for the ladies and uh, really embraced the event. The, uh, the local media was out in full force. Uh, the El Paso Times actually had a dedicated columnist who would uh, swim by every week to learn something new about the tournament and let the good folks of El Paso know walking around town with the USBC pin on was, uh, was open season to a lot of great questions, a lot of folks interested. And, you know, we, we even had a pretty good showing usually overall, just folks coming in and just watching, taking it in, something brand new. Had never seen the convention center quite like that. The El Paso Times actually put up a great video. Uh, they set up a still camera during the build that took a photo every 15 minutes. Turned that into a compilation of an empty room to crates to lanes to the world's largest mobile LED scoreboard to the finished product. So certainly a lot of cool things there. And then, of course, the community itself. Uh, very rich with uh, Southwest, Southwest heritage, uh, fantastic food if you prefer that route. If I prefer that route, you, you know I prefer that route. I know you do. That I, is my thing. To be honest with you, I was a little, uh, as we, we've talked about my diet before, it's pretty simple. It's yes. peanut, peanut butter sandwiches and chicken wings, but uh, but yes, there's a little bit of branching out in El Paso and folks telling me, you gotta try this, just just do it. And certainly, uh, certainly a lot of great uh, great little places all in the downtown area. So if anything, this, this job is an opportunity for you to broaden your culinary horizons. as the simple taste of a young boy from the Midwest, Indiana Roots. That's true. That does seem to be uh, kind of the thing. Our boy Gary Brown, who uh, oversees the USBC Collegiate and High School competition, he uh, has simple taste as well. Plain hamburgers, chicken wings. Must be an Indiana thing, but glad to see you. You brought any things there taking advantage of all that El Paso has to offer. I bet it was delicious after all. It was uh, it's definitely pretty cool. Uh, then of course, something new for, for me as well as the whole community right now since it just opened, but the uh, AAA affiliate of the San Diego Padres, the El Paso Chihuahuas starting up baseball here in 2014. They actually kicked off their minor league experience at or right next door to the NBS at the Reno Aces ballpark. But that will be a new addition to downtown El Paso. They blew up City Hall. They said we need it downtown. So if, uh, if that doesn't tell you what kind of commitment El Paso has to 
giving the folks uh, an amazing experience. I don't know. I don't know what is. But I'll tell you the first thing Mark London asked when he stopped by the broadcast the other day was for me to look up the Reno Aces schedule. Uh, he was very interested in taking in a ball game or two and doing something new in Reno. Again, we've been here a few times in history, but always something new to see or explore. And the Reno Aces ballpark, just a spare balls throw away from the National Bowling Stadium. And they happen to be in town all week. And now you got a new spare ball to throw, too. Well, luckily for the Aces, the chances of me hitting the stadium are very slim, as we've, we've both seen me shoot spares on the lanes. Speaking of spares, not a lot up there right now, because everyone's striking. Five out of six for Tom Carter. Five in a row for Split and London looking to make it six in a row. Well, that certainly is part of the goal. And you're seeing it unfold here on Bowl TV. We saw it last week with John Slavich the fourth. Rolled a perfect game here. They call him four. And his group averaged 239 in singles on the way to the top 10 in team all events. And the doubles was a little bit of a struggle. Everybody between 598 and 630. But they broke him down just how they liked him and excelled in singles. And perhaps we're seeing the same thing today. Doubles wasn't overwhelmingly good, but wasn't terrible. And now a lot of strikes being thrown. Skip Wolf with the five bagger. He had the front 10, his final game of doubles. And he has moved left and kind of faded it. And it seems to be working. It's like uh, Wayne Webb made a ball change, switched to the Diva Pearl. He has his first double of singles. Still has an outside chance to run down all events. Needs 8-10 here in his final three games. Let's look into the 240s if he finishes uh, this game off with a handful of strikes. Aaron, we just got word in the chat room that Mark London loves the Cubs. So you guys have something in common. You both know that love and the annual disappointment that you feel as a Cubs fan. Yes. That's all I have to add to that. Change working for Webb. Three in a row. Wayne 767 in team yesterday. 696? 696 here in doubles. Right here on 3940 at the National Bowling Stadium. Thanks again, everyone, for spending some time on your Thursday afternoon here on Bowl TV. Split taking care of everything. Sending sticks around. Makes it six in a row after the spare in the first frame. like that. Red ball equals red strikes. 
Front seven for London here to kick off singles. A fantastic opportunity to remind everyone, log on to Facebook and hop into the official USBC Open and Women's Championships Facebook page. Mark London offering to answer your questions. Well, it appears that taking his mind off of things, on the lanes at least, has helped Mr. London. He's got the front seven. We also have a front seven down on lane 58. Marshall Morrison, that's a familiar name from Texas. Amarillo, I believe, West Texas A&M. So we'll keep an eye on that. I have a feeling we're both about to pop on to xbowling.com because lane 58 is way down there. A little hard to see from here. Keep an eye on that. Looks like a 240 start in singles for Mr. Morrison. So, even more exciting. We have plenty of excitement right now in our feature pair here behind lanes 39 and 40. A whole bunch of strikes. Tom Carter, Craig Split, and Mark Lennon. Of course, Craig Splett, no stranger to throwing strikes here at the Open Championships. The only bowler in tournament history with three perfect games. And how many would he have if he didn't take off a few years there? Aaron had the chance to interview him last year. Perhaps he has some advice there for Mr. London coming into this year's event, but uh, Craig skipped a couple of years and it's true after uh, after his perfect game in Baton Rouge in 05, did not return to the event until here in 2013. So he shot during his singles in 05. So technically, back-to-back -back events here at the Open Championships and a perfect game. But I believe Skip uh, Skip Wolf had a lot to do with getting Craig back out here. And, Here we are once again. Great shot there by Skip Wolf. There's that cold eight that we talked about, as they say in the Midwest. Can't throw it any better than that. Down lane 58, Marshall Morrison, 245 to start singles. Has the front eight now. We'll keep an eye on that. Mark London on our featured pair. Also with the front eight. Craig Splett. Seven bagger after a spare. Tom Carter, seven out of eight. Stone nine, stops him again. Seven out of eight, then a nine in the nine. How about that? So these guys clearly lined up. Wolf with the eight pin, Carter with the nine pin. And now Wayne Webb 
with the 10 pin, can't get the love. Perhaps they're all giving their strikes to Mark London. Who's doing everything he can to not look at the scoreboard or what's going on. Marshall Morrison's run down on lane 58. Comes to an end. He leaves the 6 9 10. All right, Lane converts the single pin. Can still get to 225 here. So, Aaron, if you're counting along, Marshall Morrison's hopes of a singles title are mathematically over. So we will turn our attention back to yeah. lanes 39 and 40 here at the MBS. A great run. Nonetheless, 800 is still out there, but not 800 enough. 826, the number they're chasing, Lewis Jenkins Jr. from Oklahoma. Also a Cubs fan, how about that? So many. Standing united in disappointment. It'll happen, I promise, eventually. It's happened before. It'll happen again. can only hope. The Cubs Nation can now rally around Mark London. Yes. And here comes London. Stepping up front eight. Up on lane 40, taking his time. Red ball in hand. Left leg against the ball return. So you asked, how deep are you guys gonna get? Here it is. For the front nine, he drifts to the right. Great shot there, hits the range finder. About 10 at the break point. Seems to be a popular destination for bowling balls. If you hit the, the range finder, Usually a pretty good chance you're gonna hit the pocket. It's just a matter of how you get to that point. All right, Tom so Carter gets there. His reward is 710. Drop him into the 230s, but once again, here we are. Live on Bull TV. These guys are breaking down this pattern all the right ways, and we have another opportunity chance at perfection here. So be sure to put it out. Social media, put on Twitter, put on Facebook. Here we are again. Or if you're on Twitter, you can conveniently use my post at USBC Aaron. Putting the word out. Mr. Dean Richards checking in in the chat room. He had a solid year here at the OC. Big 2100. Dan Lyman in the chat room has a 300 game here. Four hundred and twenty-eight. So our audience growing. A lot of bowling fans out there. Thanks for giving us part of your Thursday afternoon. This is Matt Canizaro and Aaron Smith. We're live at the 2014 USBC Open Championships. 
Mark London doing everything he can to give us some excitement. Will be our first live perfect game of this year's event. First since Will Garber. During the 2013 event, we were lucky enough to uh, have the cameras up for Jeff Rickles and 11thframe.com, and Will was a few pairs to the left here at the NBS, and we went old school because I broke one of the cameras. Black and white, 300. That was the last one, also the last lefty. It's a roll of perfect game. Except for Graham Fa. Oh, Graham, I forgot about Graham. Good old Graham Fa. That the wasn't, the what, first 800 of this year's event. I wasn't here that day, so. <laughs> if, if you're not in the building, it doesn't count. It didn't happen. All right, folks, here we go. Mark London, front nine, live on Bull TV. Got that one inside of the range finder and gets a huge break. The nine, nine pin gets tripped by the... What do you call that? The ro uh, I'm not even gonna try. Yeah. I mean, words cannot it describe was, it. It was spinning. Is it? Is it the spinning messenger? The spinner? Whatever it was, great break for Mr. Lund. He got that one just inside that range finder we were talking about. And a little bit high flush. Could have been a four, could have been a nine, could have been a four nine. Instead, he's got the front 10 here on Bowl TV. Tell everybody he's going for 11 right now. There it is. Gave that one some room. So it made it back nice and flush. A little less drama on that one. But here we are. The stage is set front 11. Mark London to start singles. Going to become the 28th bowler of the 2014 Open Championships. Mark London, here we go. Four three hundred got that one inside. Oh, two ninety nine. Wrap ten. ten. What a run! We're so used to being down there to get that video for Facebook. <laughs> Great run by Mr. London. He's almost off screen as we're watching the replay now. Holy cow, 299 live here on Bowl TV to start game one of singles for Mark London. The wrap at 10. The red ball, but you know what, Aaron? Starting singles with 299. That's a good Not thing. a bad thing. We've seen it happen before. Saw it in 2009. Bo Gergen, 299. I said, Bo, great run. Keep it up. And he did. He duplicated that performance with another 299 and went on to shoot 862, the highest three game set in Open Championships history to claim the 2009 regular singles title. see if Mr. London can follow in those famous footsteps. This time, however, I'll be standing up with the video camera just like normal procedures so the Facebook world can share in the excitement as well. But some big scores on this pair of lanes. First game is singles. Skip Wolf 236, Wayne Webb 225. Tom Carter, 235, Craig Splett, 236, and of course, Mark London, 299. Tune in, tell all your friends. 
These lanes are looking nice for these guys here. Heading into game two of singles. With that, have a quick station identification and the rest of singles momentarily. London starts off game two with what he had hoped to end game one with. Guess that comes a little bit easier off the hand after a run at perfection here at the Open Championships. Skip Wolf finished doubles with the front ten for a Mixer 7 ended his run. Of course, just now we get to see Mark London. Finish just shy of adding his name to the record books. Still a fantastic performance and a great start here. 826 the number of these guys chasing top of regular singles here at the 2014 event. We kicked off February 28th. We'll go all the way until July 13th for the 111th edition of the Open Championships. Once again, we want to thank everyone for taking some time out on their Thursday to join us here live on Bowl TV. This is Aaron Smith alongside Matt Canizaro. And if you, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please be sure to do so. You'll get notifications on all the latest and greatest video features put together by Matt Lawson, as well as all the archives from here in Reno from the Open and Women's Championships, along with the globe-trotting Lucas Wiseman, who will actually be here in town to bowl in the next few days. But please subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, youtube.com slash bowl TV. And of course, on social media, the sport of bowling is on Facebook at facebook.com slash USBC. Follow, follow us at Twitter at twitter.com slash USBC. And of course, you can follow Matt and myself at USBC Matt at USBC Aaron. All the latest and greatest as well.
way down on lanes 57 and 8. Marshall Morrison so keeping his 800 dreams alive. Start with the front three. We'll keep an eye on him. Make it three in a row for Craig Splett. his all events hopes alive. Doesn't have much room now. Needs 8-10 for a share of the lead from Anthony Lacaz, who's up on top of the standings with 22-73.
we're halfway through game two of singles here. And who will, who will be next? That's the real question. We are... There's a great shot from Jim Rude, by the way, for the double. He struggled a little bit in game one of singles here, but want to give him some love as well. Pulling with a very talented group and certainly have to have the skills to be among such success. So hoping for big things here in game two from Jim. With a 10 pin. Wayne Webb's run at all events officially comes to a close. Although 804, still a nice set. We needed 810 for a share of the lead. strikes this game. What are we going to do now? Well, I mean, 279s are still pretty exciting. And certain of these guys well on their way to solid single sets. on track here to a striking ways on 39 after the 7-10 in the third. He's actually making the ball change here. He might be at last frame. He's looking something up and didn't catch it. It's a great shot there. Great ball change as well. That's, uh, I know we mentioned a little bit earlier today, kind of, I think it's uh, after putting up a lot of strikes like that, it might be tough to make a decision to make a move on the lane or make a ball change like that, but you can't let frames get away here. Certainly Mark knows that from being around the sport as a regional player and course out here at the open. Skip Wolf feeling it. Five out of six.
So a tough break for Craig there. Just starting with four out of five. We've seen a few of those today here on our feature pair. I think this is the first time we've seen one on 40. Pocket 710. Makes it three in a row after the ball change. Looks like a motive tribal. efforts in the first game and right now they find themselves one pin apart. Sure, if he, I don't think he liked that one, but gets all 10 back. Self described is awful, but looked pretty good going down the lane for Tom Carter there. Didn't like that one off his hand, but take the results when you can get them. for the seventh frame. Mark London looking to make it four in a row. After starting off singles with 299. <laughs> Needs to get to 826 for a share of the regular singles lead if he keeps throwing shots like that. We're going to have an exciting final game. Well, we learned on our last broadcast that the white belt increases your average by 11 pins automatically. That's true.
Mark London checking in again to see how the viewership is. And we had a conversation the other day about uh, about the uses of the words classic and experienced over old. And where Mark comes from in the Midwest, they prefer raisins. So I guess that would mean that the young men we were watching and the young ladies, they were grapes. That's the way science works. I can't argue with science or results. And as Mark said himself, a pretty good performance by these raisins here. They've uh, handled this tricky 40-foot doubles and singles pattern quite well. Put up some solid cashy numbers and doubles. And now here they are in singles. A lot of strikes up there. A lot of great bowlers in the building, Aaron, watching. Uh, just looking around, uh, I saw Paul Stoltz earlier. And usually where there's a Paul, there's an Amy. And Amy, a very talented young lady. We've seen her on the Queen TV show in the past. And I believe look, they're bowling at 7 p.m. tonight. And looking up behind us, also we see Dan Vick, former Junior Team USA member, a very talented left-hander with the ability to put up some big numbers here. So looking forward to seeing what he can offer on these challenging lane conditions. Now here's London on lane four. You're looking for five in a row. That is not the red ball. No, he made the change uh, either in the third or fourth frame. He left the 7-10 in the third. I actually did not see the shot in the fourth. I was looking something up. Then all of a sudden I saw the silver ball. Well, it looks like this... Uh, these motive balls doing good things for Mr. London. And of course, our all events leader, Anthony Lacaz, 22.73. His number is safe. I just wonder which company is just gonna beat everyone else and just start naming the bowling ball by colors only. I mean, we used to have it back in the day with the, with the Rhino series. It's true. I guess Brunswick had, had a few lines, the Red Fuse. And, all Makes that it easier. Stuff, but just, yeah, we're coming out with the new, uh, I mean, there's the orange ball, there's the purple, there's the red. Well, we saw it with the hammers back in the day, the blue hammer, purple hammer, red hammer, black hammer, then the, then the rhinos you mentioned, teal, steel, purple, so many. It does certainly narrow it down. And of course, track bowling with some numbers involved. Take a look at the track website here. Of course, track the sponsor here of Bowl TV at the USBC Open Championships, as well as the track showcase lanes downstairs here at the National Bowling Stadium. Well, my good friend Chris Hester, we chatted about that the other day a little bit. And, uh, you know, the track name's a little bit harder to to memorize, but uh, he's making big predictions for the track MX-10 as being the next big thing. So we'll see. We have some of the, the track guys coming to town tonight, Rich Hansen, Bugsy Kelly. And look forward to seeing what uh, they're capable of this week. Of course, track has the white ball, the 400A special edition. That one's pretty recognizable out there on the lanes. Seen a, quite a few of those running, rolling down the lane. Saw one of those at league last night. That is a fact. So definitely if you haven't checked it out already, check out trackbowling.com for the latest and greatest. You can pick those up in the Ebonite Columbia track booth here at the Open Championships. All of the companies represented so you can visit your favorite and check out the latest and greatest equipment they have to offer. Certainly don't rule out track bowling as they are big supporters of the USBC Open Championships 
in sponsoring all of these bowl TV broadcasts you're watching and of course the track showcase lanes. Ninth frame for London here. Leaves ten pin there. Still has a two thirty six available, so he can still get out of this game with a chance at the regular singles lead, eight twenty six up on top. London with 299 in the opener, leaving a ring 10. For those uh, you may be joining late, if you want to scroll back, check out the archive later. It's a pretty exciting 10th frame for Mr. London. Tripping the nine out in the first one. Pretty good shot in the 10th to 10 pin disagreed with. Well, Aaron, we've been at this since February 28th. That's when the Open Championships kicked off here at the National Bowling Stadium in 2014. Women's Championships got underway April 11th, and we're down to just 10 more broadcasts on the live stream schedule. You can find that on the tournament page on bowl.com. But coming up on May 31st, Ben Laughlin and Miguel Lopez, companion team members, both had 300 last year in the team event. Looking forward to another exciting run here in 2014. And then we take a short break, at least officially, until June 10th. And then we're on the lanes with Lodge Lanes 2, the defending Regular team champion, John Gaines, recent USBC Hall of Famer. And Lucas Wiseman will be on the road at the USBC Senior Masters. So when we're not on the air, Lucas will be. So a lot of great things yet to happen here on Bull TV this year. Check out the schedule. Don't forget to join us. If you missed any of the earlier broadcasts or heard there was some excitement, you're probably right. So you can find those all at youtube.com slash Bull TV archived for your viewing pleasure. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future broadcasts or any additional excitement. Our Team All Events leading Yondas HI. After they had a big team event, we got them on Bowl TV the next day and watched them take the lead in Team All Events with a big number, 10,363. We haven't talked much about that today, but uh, based off of yesterday's team event, uh, Wayne Webb and crew coming in with uh, all sorts of work to do to get to a number like that. Uh, that is a, a beast, a warlock, as they say, just shy of the Team All Events record, 10,425. But if you want to see how to play the lanes in doubles and singles, you got a pretty good look at it today. You can get a great look at it if you go back to early April and check out Jans' HI. Jans' home improvement and that team's run to the top of the leaderboard. And that certainly was a fun show. Uh, had the chance at the all-time record, stepping up in the 10th frame of the final game of singles. But I gotta be pretty happy with the, uh, the performance we've seen today. These guys have obviously a ton of experience on the lanes. Been bowling together for a few years now. And it certainly shows. They've tackled this pattern just about as well as it gets. And the best part is we still have a game to go. So once again, thank you everyone for tuning in of right around the 400 mark here in Reno. Joining us on Bowl TV. So 
236, 246 for Wolf, puts him at 482. Carter, 455, split, 468. Wayne's gonna be right around 450. Here we're surrounded by bowling celebrities right now. It's very humbling. Not only in person, but in the chat room, just reading down the list. Greg Zika, Bob Shoneman, Mike Donahue, arguably the best left-hander in the state of Texas. And Andrew Luce, talked to him earlier. You guys can chat Cubs when he's in town in a couple weeks. Here's Wayne Webb with a nice step left. Making his way to late 38. He's gonna deliver the ball here on 39. Great shot there again, using that range fighter down lane. That's why it's there at the 10 board. And hit that, chances are you're gonna be in the pocket. And as he was there for the 225 finish, back to back 225 games for the Hall of Famer. Unfortunately for Mark London, his run at singles ended with that four pin. 824. Still not too bad. But the 826 up on top. At least behind lanes 3940. Safe for another day. London also finishes with 225. Nice couple of games for him, 524. He's not gonna win singles, but a great performance so far. 800, of course, still out there, as they say, over the radio. Possible 800 on lanes 39 and 40. So we'll keep an eye on Mark London. Riveting stuff there, Matt. Right. Aaron Smith, a comedian. The word of the day is riveting. Use it in a sentence. As many times as possible, and when you do, all of the live stream viewers at home, scream real loud, go crazy. <laughs> we appreciate you joining us for another episode of Aaron Smith's Playhouse, here on Bull TV. <laughs> Big scores again here in game two. Skip Wolf 246, Wayne Webb and Mark London 225. Tom Carter 220, Craig Splett 232, and Jim Root struggling 185 265, or 165, sorry about that. Used to saying all those twos. And of course the excitement of this episode of Aaron's Playhouse. Thrilling conclusion, if you will. All right, here we go. Game three, last, last game of the day here on Bowl TV. We'll see what this talented Midwest crew has in store for the finale. Had two runs at perfection today. Skip Wolf finishing up doubles with the front 10 before a mixer seven ended his run. And of course, one game after Mark London, front 11, finish with 299. split. Of course, the record holder here at the Open. Only bowler in tournament history to roll three perfect games in the championship lanes. Done in 96, 2005, and last year here at the NBS in 2013. As you mentioned, after, after our interview in 2005, he decided not to come back for a while. What'd you do? I, I don't know. Maybe it was a bad interview, but he shot 300 in Baton Rouge and 
did not return to the Open Championships lanes until 2013. I feel bad if it was my fault. Well, to be honest, usually after talking to you, I kind of feel like leaving as well, but I keep coming back. So it's all about teamwork. Starts with the open here in game three. Well, so we'll need a lot of strikes. It's 8 03, still a good score. That'd be enough for second. Should pay pretty well as well. Only two 800 so far in singles competition. Of course, 826 from Lewis Jenkins Jr. We mentioned that one quite a few times. Sitting in second, Chris Murray. Of San Jose with 802. And then we've had two additional 800s in the team event since I forgot it earlier today. The highest set of the year, Graham Fa. Was in town for the Expo and Intercollegiate Team Championships. I actually just watched broadcast on Tuesday before league where his Urbana University team fell a little bit short losing to Emil Williams Jr. alma mater Lindenwood University for their second ITC title but the other 800 of the year and team event actually belonged to Lewis Jenkins' companion team member. John Ricaldi. It's a good year to be from Oklahoma. Ricaldi and Jenkins both hail from the Sooner State. Tom Carter there with the Bird Dog Scout. Didn't get the message from the messenger, 10 pin. Let's see what you did there. Wayne Webb with the strike as he's working towards the 225 triplicate here in singles. Gentlemen, please pick up the pace of play. Thank you. A few more strikes. Get things back on track. Oops, there's more bowling coming to the National Bowling Stadium today. Not here on Bowl TV, but we still got the starting to fill out with folks getting ready for the 3 p.m. team squad. Seven tonight. We'll have uh, they already dropped their names a few times, but a wins limited crew will be taking to the lanes, featuring recently inducted USBC Hall of Famer Dale Traber, along with Gary Derashevsky, Gus Yanaris, Ryan Lever. Who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting Lenny. I can't forget Lenny. Yes, we see Hall of Famer Lenny Borsch Jr. Can't forget Lenny. Those guys, great group. I had the pleasure of presenting their Eagles to them in 2009 at their local Hall of Fame banquet. And when they took home that team title, it was a battle with Sack Toe, companion team of Jason Milligan. Those guys battle to the 10th frame and of the longest event in tournament history. 154 days, Mr. Smith. Holy cow. The top two teams bowled on the same squad, just 10 lanes apart. They pushed each other to the finish and age and experience won out. 
That was a pretty awesome night to be at Cashman Center. Definitely will go down in the memoirs as a career highlight for me, being behind the scenes. Mark London trying to become a career highlight with an 800 series here in singles. He's gonna need them all, but he can still get there. Mr. Smith looks like we have a request for some double scores here. What did Wayne Webb shoot in doubles? He had a great team event, 767, as did Mark London, 748. Doubles went well. Don't forget Craig Splett at 732 in team, but uh, we'll run down everyone on our feature pair here. Uh, kick off with Wayne. He added 696 to that 767. Splut went 617 for 1313. Jim Rude 597. Mark London 658 for 1255. And the big final game for Skip Wolf. And Tom Carter went 542. Wolf going 289 and Carter adding 253. Skip finished up 694. Tom 660 for 1354. So that's how our first three games went. And of course, you can see the scores for the first two games up on the scoreboard to your right. The frames are winding down. This is frame three of our final game, game six of six. Wayne Webb still making his run at the top 10. It's still out there. He's going to be short of 2,200. But top 10 still possible. Mark London, 800 still possible. Craig Splett working on a solid year as well. Certainly can't get back the years he missed, but making the most of being back on the tournament lanes. It is a great day here at the USBC Open Championships. Tom Carter says so. For the double, he's having a great day. This Bowlers Universe group, solid from top to bottom. You just never know some, some years which team is going to rise to the top. Back in 2010, it was Mark London in Bowlers Universe 2. Finishing sixth in the regular team event. This year, strikes for everybody. Spreading the wealth. Andy Zumwalt is keeping an eye on you. He's got the faux hawk rocking. Drinking his souvenir soda. Well, he, he's, trying to buy, he's trying to learn what he did wrong on the lanes yesterday, so. As he bowled doubles and singles. Put on a 
humongous effort compared to what you may have in store, Mr. Canizaro. So uh -oh. How did it end up? Well, it was more than 5.30 both sets, so. Okay, well, something to strive for. Was it Was it much more? It was sizable. It was I know. 6.0-ish. I know last year we were, we were pretty, uh, pretty close. So, 6-0, that's a, it's a tall task, but I might practice one more time before it's time. I know my, my teammates might appreciate that. Although all the attention, luckily, will be on the rest of them because they're way better than me, including Zeke Bate, the defending regular singles champ, who we'll have on our live stream broadcast June 21st. And you heard Mark tell us earlier that they did spend some time next door at the Storm Bowlers Journal Championships. And why not? So many great divisions, average-based, age-based, something for everybody. That event being contested just on the other side of our divider wall, lanes 69 through 78 here at the National Bowling Stadium. So much to do under one roof here at the NBS and downstairs. Part of the $15 million renovation process, we've gained a satellite International Bowling Museum and Hall of Fame. And of course, the track showcase lanes, 10 lanes on the ground floor here at the MBS, used for team practice sessions and the home of the Columbia 300 40 frame game. Just your fun opportunity to go out with some friends and bowling a handicap singles event. A lot of great side events there to enjoy. Check out those opportunities. And for the ladies coming to town, the USBC Women's Championships just a few miles away at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. And next year, the fun in Reno continues as the USBC Mixed debuts here at the MBS alongside the Women's Championships. An opportunity for families, friends to travel and bowl together format will be similar to that of the women's championships as well as the average base divisions four in the team event six for doubles and singles you can find out more information about the usbc mix and next year's women's championships on bowl.com registration for those events opens june 3rd so we'll have some details in the week to come
four out of six for Tom Carter here in the finale. Make the turn at 4.55. Split making, or looking to make it four in a row. Looking rateable on 39. Things winding down, frame number six of our final game here. Greg Splett with the four bagger. He's having a nice singles event. Mark London, a couple of open frames here in game three. 299 in the opener, 225 in game two. the double in the sixth. Same ball all day so far, man. Just made the moves left and it's still working. See, if I was throwing shots like that, I certainly would stick with that ball and maybe even bring it next year. We'll go down to Bowling Ball Express, ship it right to El Paso today. That way you know it's there when you get there. there for Carter. Wow, that was so nine was up there for a second. Nine fell out. Breaks up the split, leaves just the nine. for Root there. Root already having a rough day. That was just kind of rude of the National Bowling Stadium to deny Root that strike. A great shot for the eight pin. Tough break on the mixer for London. 
It's a second 7 10 here in singles. Drops his max score to 210. Should still put him in the 730s. So as we wind down here, we've had an interesting look. Our last two live streams here from the Open Championships. Just uh, the group we had on last time featuring a bunch of folks who went up, grew up through the collegiate ranks uh, and still are competing at that level. A.J. Johnson, Matt Gasson, Matthew O'Grady, Andrew Koff. They put on uh, quite, a, quite a solid performance, especially for many of them making their first Open Championships appearance. I mean, here we are on the same, on that same uh, oil pattern, same oil. And uh, we have these guys who have, who have fought their way through all the technology advances and bowling on different surfaces. And here they are putting up a similar performance. So it really shows that uh, There's still plenty of opportunities for folks. Uh, obviously, the kids with the with the rev rates are can be intimidating and putting up a lot of strikes. And these guys shown you can do it the uh, the old-fashioned way. With great shot making, covering their spares, and sir, these bowlers are classically trained and have seen technology change from, in some cases, rubber balls to plastic urethane and then reactive resin. But there's one thing that has never changed over the years is how important spare shooting is. So a miscue there by Craig Splett. And I think in some cases even, you talked about two extremes, the classic guys who have seen it all and the youngsters who have grown up on sport bowling. But for the, the middle crowd, the bowlers who are used to more house conditions than anything. Maybe not as in tune with the spare game as these gentlemen or the youngsters who are used to maybe not striking so much. Certainly don't want folks to be discouraged coming to the Open Championship. The lane conditions designed to be attacked from a variety of angles so that bowlers of all ages and skill levels can get the ball to the pocket. But you certainly have to expect to be accurate and make your spares when you're here. And that's something that comes with hard work and practice. So those teams and bowlers who put the work in are rewarded with big scores. It's as simple as that, just like anything. You work hard and you practice and you will hopefully excel. These guys just have been excelling for two or three times as many years as the youngsters we saw the other day.
So here we are, the ninth frame of the final game of singles. Skip Wolf with the washout. He's been in the pocket all game three. Nine or better every shot until this particular frame. Tom Carter with the open frame, number eight, looking to finish strong here. Still has 217 out there. Great shot there by Skip Wolf. Wash out, no problem. Skip's had a very, uh, very nice overall performance today. Finished with a 601 in team yesterday. So he bounced back fantastically here. Not that 601's a bad score, but I'm sure he was looking for a little bit more. Came back 694 in doubles and still can get to 700 here with a few more strikes. Streak comes to an end. He needed the last four strikes. Shot there from London, just trying to hold on here at the end of game number three to, I want to say salvage this set. He had a great start, 299, 225, but got away a little bit here in game three. 200 still possible. Cannot be upset about that series at all. Certainly, I'm sure he would have liked game three to go a little bit better. Perhaps we can get some thoughts from him after the conclusion of today's doubles and singles event. We'll do our best. Otherwise, I have no doubt he'll share those either on Facebook or in the Bowling News where he writes a regular column. And what better subject than your experience at the USBC Open Championships, the first person account of a senior standout on the lanes here at the National Bowling Stadium. What went right, what went wrong, and how'd you get there? Mark, a very technical guy. I'm sure he's got a lot of details about the last nine games. We are now into the final frame of today's broadcast. Skip Wolf looking to put the finishing touches on a nice singles event, 236, 246. And a spare here gives him 213. And Aaron, as always, feverishly writing down numbers and calculating all events totals. So that our Bowl TV viewers can be well informed about today's events. Shot by Carter there. Let's look at the 672.
Aaron Smith, what would I do for a 672 at the USBC Open Championships? Seems like such a distant possibility after the last couple of years, but I think that's the best part about this. So you, you get another chance at it. That's true, one of the unique aspects. You only get one, one shot a year, but when it goes well and when you happen to surpass your fellow employees, you get bragging rights for the entire year. So 672 would certainly help your case. See, I bet you couldn't ask or find one of our longtime bowlers who hasn't had a bit of a roller coaster ride here at the Open Championships. Some years are going to be great. Some years, not so much. Everybody's got that one that you wish you could give back. I think for us, it's half of them, but we do it because we love it, sir. All right, Skip Wolf finishes up single 695. He's unofficially at 1990. It was a good year. I was around for that one. Well, Aaron, you're also around for a possible run at history here on lanes 41 and 42. Emily Malone has started her final game of singles with the front six. We haven't had a young lady shoot 300 here since Shannon O'Keefe in 2012. So we could see a little bit of magic here and with some fine camera work could make that happen here live on Bowl TV. So we'll keep you posted on that. She's up for her seventh shot right now. And it goes high, leaves the 3-6. So no fireworks today. Good so job, Matt. Put all the pressure on her. Not the first time. Back to your calculation, sir. Didn't mean to interrupt. Mission accomplished, though. Bought you some time there, though, to, uh, to punch in some numbers. All right, uh, Tom Carter, 657, 1933. Skip Wolf. So. There it is. Greg Splett says, hello, Greg Zika. It. Always nice to have a little bit of fun on our broadcast. Craig finishes up with 6.95 in singles. To get to 20.44, Wayne Webb, 6.64, 21.27. Skip Wolf, 19.90. for Jim Rude and Mark London here as we get ready to wrap up. Mark London gets him to 2109. We'll take a second and switch over to the scoreboard cam. See if we can't get a word here with Mr. London as we wrap things up. Give him just a minute to get situated and see if he wants to come up in the booth. Otherwise, we'll Give it our final send off for today. There's your look at the final scores. 695, 664, 657, 695, 703, and Jim Rude, 516, a little bit of a struggle, but uh, great show today. 
as we saw some terrific senior players, including USBC Hall of Famer Wayne Webb, work their magic here at the 2014 USBC Open Championships. If you missed any of today's broadcast, you certainly can check it out at youtube.com slash bowl TV. That and all of our broadcasts and videos from here at the 2014 event. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, broadcaster extraordinaire, Mark oh. London. Well, Mark, tell us. Oh. Our viewers, we're looking well, at the that, scoreboard right now. Well, I hope that six sticks to the DVD. Oh my God, that was awful, that last, last game, but. Well, you made it, and uh, made it through. a lot of Another folks year. out there are curious about uh, about <laughs> the strategy and the game plan, and things seem to open up well, for you guys quite a bit there, in the, at least the starter singles. Yes, uh, yes, indeed they did. We had an idea just to kind of, uh, what we did not want to do was was have a, a cliff or create too small of a, of a burn area. We wanted a, you know, five board area, even heading down to the, the break point where um, where we could still have transition and have a readable and playable and scorable transition uh, all through the rest of the set. I'm not quite sure what happened the last couple of frames here. Uh, you know, Webb's got that Hall of Fame carry. Guys like that do. Uh, the rest of us just try to, you know, see what, see how we can manage it to uh, not stub our toe too much. <laughs> if I could pick up a spare that last game, but uh, you know, that's that's how it goes. Um, you know. We were actually expecting more of uh, this uh, to start out with. We were expecting more of what the pattern uh, next door at the, at the Bowl of Journal had. They were a lot tighter when we came into Bowl Monday and Tuesday night. Um, or was that Monday night? And it was even, we bowled both uh, Fresh and Burn. Really not the best read, um, but. Uh, at least we came down and uh, practiced on the, the showcase lanes. Please do that. And uh, got, got, got some rhythm, got a feel of what was happening, watched him transition, and then we decided, okay, we're gonna do this for team and then uh, for doubles and singles, we'll, we'll see what's out here, then we'll get together and kind of, you know, again, get that area where we can play a part. Uh, Webb's a little bit further left, uh, guys like me and Jimmy Root are a little further right. So we can at least have a, have a bigger area to to create uh, readable and scorable transitions. And before I go, I want to thank uh, Jay Brewer at uh, Stability Socks. Thank you very much uh, for your help this week. Also, I'm, I'm going to give a big shout to Motive. They signed me a little while ago, about two months ago. Uh, Brett and Shannon, congratulations on your newborn. And uh, thanks to Motive for their equipment today, and also to Turbo Grips for having my back for the last 11 years. And also to all, all my friends in Houston at uh, Emerald Bowl uh, with uh, my boss, Mike Austin, at Mike Austin's Bowling Dynamics and Don Ellis, uh, Hall of Famer extraordinaire, Texas Bowling legend, and uh, Don Jr. and the whole group there. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, folks, and there you have it. The words right from Mark London. Bowled today, bowled very well here in single 703. And a very nice year for this group overall. Got to feel pretty good about the Bowlers universe and their performance here in Reno. And that's going to do it for today's broadcast. We'll be back on the air two days from now with uh, another great team event. So look forward to that. Check out all the details on Bowl.com. And once again, for Aaron Smith, this is Matt Canizaro and Mark London saying goodbye from the National Bowling Stadium for today. That's the news for now, and we'll see you on the lanes. I thought I had that dime. I really did. I thought I had it. You saw my reaction. I thought I had it. Oh, well, at least I put it there. Well, that was a great shot and uh, part of the – Full TV archives forever. So. Guess what, folks? That's the news, and we are out of here. See you next time, folks.